All right, let's check out this cool CVE in UEFI BIOSes. So I assume that those of you who are watching this probably have watched the other UEFI examples, but just in case you're skipping into it from some random location, I'm obliged to tell you that Unified Extensible Firmware Interface is a firmware interface specification predominantly but not exclusively used on Intel-based platforms. It is also used on mobile phones to some degree. We're going to be looking at a vulnerability in a Dell Intel-based system, which has a basic input-output system, or BIOS, that implements UEFI. So its UEFI BIOS supports non-volatile variables. So this is a common thing for UEFI to support non-volatile variables. It's part of the spec. I'm going to call them NVBARs. And they are often stored on the serial peripheral interface flash chip. That is the non-volatile storage chip used by UEFI systems. Now, NVVARs can either be used exclusively for the firmware or they can be used in conjunction with an operating system where the OS would, for instance, manipulate a variable for consumption by the firmware that would tell the firmware, hey, I want you to boot this operating system next boot or, hey, I want you to, you know, do a firmware update next boot. Now, UEFI does actually specify a way that firmware can be left around into runtime of the system and then that runtime code can subsequently be used by an operating system to read and write non-volatile variables. Primary reason for this is that, you know, essentially you can decouple the implementation of how non-volatile variables are stored for a given firmware. Um, behind the scenes, the operating system just uses some code that gets left by the, the firmware at runtime. Now, a common mistake that UEFI firmware developers make is that there are things like permissions on NVVARs, and they may say things like this variable is accessible at runtime and that is not. And so they may mistakenly think that a variable that they nominally uh, believe to be accessible only by the firmware, like so read and written only by the firmware, they may not think that it is ACID because, you know, they think, well, my code is good and my code is not going to set that to something bad that is going to corrupt itself. Unfortunately, uh, if an operating system is completely compromised, then a kernel-level attacker can directly access the spy flash chip where the NVVARs are stored, and then, you know, depending on other security mechanisms that may be in play, most of the time they can subsequently manipulate all NVRAM variables. Consequently, UEFI vendors should think of NVRAM as our NVVARs as fully attacker-controlled. So if you imagine that you've got some SPI flash chip on the motherboard, and let's say it's 8 megabytes, it can generally be thought of as having a big chunk of integrity checkable code and data, some chunk of naturally changing NVRAM, these NVVARs, and then usually some other chunk of integrity checkable code and data. And so most of the security mechanisms are focused around, you know, integrity checking this and making sure that uh, firmware updates are correct and that this doesn't get corrupted and that if it does get corrupted, you can still potentially detect it at boot time. But unfortunately, because this data is naturally meant to change, there are not good ways to necessarily integrity check it, like with a exception of some very, very limited variables that can have digital signatures over them almost all of the variables are just complete acid. And so I said that there's a way for the UEFI firmware to leave around some code for runtime to sort of decouple the interface. And so you can think of it like if a user space application was trying to access NVVARs, it would be calling into some library given by the operating system that would give a notional get variable interface. That library in user space would call into some kernel implementation of get variable and that kernel implementation may, you know, just directly have a way to access the non-volatile memory, or it may reuse some runtime code that was left around by the UEFI firmware at boot time, and that code will then understand this formatting and access it. So at the end of the day, the ultimate goal for this get variable function is to take data from here in the NVVARs and to ultimately copy it over to here to the virtual memory space somewhere in the heap when the firmware is running or if it's a runtime variable when the operating system is running. So essentially get var is copying data from here, this acid data, somewhere into the heap. And so that's why we could potentially have a heap overflow as in this section. So here's the code, go find the vulnerability.
well, that's not really going to work because I can't assume that you understand the full semantics of get variable. There's nothing, you know, intrinsically uh, obvious about how exactly this works. So let's uh, go look at the, the spec here for a second. So the relevant bits are first, this data size value is marked as in and out. So this value can be an input saying, you know, what amount of data do we want to actually copy from a non-volatile variable into a user supplied buffer, this data. And it may also be an output size of the data. So data size, it says on entry, points to the size in bytes of the data buffer. So this is that optional buffer right here. So on entry, it points to the size in bytes of data buffer. On return, points to the size of the data returned in data. Okay, but then there's a little bit of a caveat here. It says uh, this function overall you know, reads the specified variable from the UEFI variable store, so that's on SpyFlash. If the data buffer is too small to hold the contents of the variable, an error EFI buffer too small is returned and data size is set to the required buffer size to obtain the data. So basically it's saying if you say with your data size, hey, I've got you know 10 bytes and the non-volatile variable is 20 bytes big, then it's going to return EFI buffer too small and it's going to say, hey, by the way, you need 20 bytes in order to actually store this variable. So you know, go get yourself 20 bytes and get back to me. So now with that context about you know, how this data size is used, what it's set to initially, I want you to go read the code very carefully and think about how this could potentially cause a problem, given that in this code, this m erase record share is set to 964 bytes hard-coded fixed size on the heap.